thank you for another Shabbat. Lord, we just praise you, Lord, for this another Shabbat. And Lord, we cry that you would touch the prayers on the altar. Pray for those who have not been able to make it. We lift up them. Lord, we lift up Sierra. Touch, Lord God, that family. Move upon her. Lord, that you just begin to move in every situation. Touch Tabby and them and her family, God. Lord, we lift up every family here. Lord and Bridget, Father God, and that household, Lord, and Father God, Brother Charlie, and all them, Lord, we mm -hmm. cry, Lord, that you touch each one. Yes. Father, and as we go from here, Lord, we cry that you just take us further into your truth. Yes. And Father, that you have your way. Shalom. Shalom. Is our reader who wants to read? I do it. So, yeah. So I'm going to go into that, uh, the way of escape. Okay. That's our uh, name or uh, lesson. Okay. The way of escape. Is there a way to escape? The way, way of escape? The way of escape. The way, the way, the W A Y. Yeah. Oh, that's not the way of escape. The way of escape. That's E S E S C A P E. And start up with Hebrews uh, ver uh, chapter 2 and 3. Chapter 2 and 3. There we go to Luke 18 and 1. Luke 18 and 1. Verses to go right. breaking down into. <clears throat> so the way of escape. Right. That's our escape. subject yeah. here. Okay. Oh, excuse me. All right, everybody's ready. Everyone, yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah, almost. Oh, yeah. Right. And so all these scriptures would tie into showing you in Joel, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that we gotta yeah, come together and pray, mm -hmm. seek the Lord fast, cry out, yes, get ourselves ready for His coming, yes, and for what is going to go down in the earth, mm -hmm. the things that's going to go down in the earth. Yes. So Hebrews two and three, Hebrews. Chapter 2, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? And I want to say something about that. A lot of our people neglect salvation. Yes, they are. So that's why, you know, that's why I said, how can we escape right. if we neglect so great a salvation? A lot of us not going to escape if they neglect it. Yeah. We got to get serious and know that we got to come back to the Lord, seek Him, right. come to His truth. Yeah. Luke 18 1. chapter 18 verse 1 and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint alright so he's telling you that we always supposed to pray right yes because that's the only way you're going to escape yeah that would say it. true not faint because mm -hmm. when you faint that means you don't believe no more wow 
right? Wow, yeah. You say, oh, the Lord ain't coming no more. Oh, wow, that's bad. It seems like everything's going back because, like, you know, like, you know how the, the we look at the, 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 the birth pains? Yeah. All of a sudden, something happened, right? Uh-huh. And we think, oh man, the Lord's getting ready to come. Because oh, I'm seeing all that. But then the Lord let it get, he kind of let it slow down. Yeah, slow it down. Then that's sometimes why Israel look at that and say, oh, it don't like nothing going on. So I want to go back to the world. Wow. And <laughs> you say, oh, they don't like the Lord's coming. I, uh, I can just go back and party. That's what's going on. And you faint. Yep. You got to stay in it, right? Yep. Stay watchful. And there's a precept that goes into this. Go to Sirach, uh, chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. Hmm. See, ever just texted me and told me she's on her way. Okay. So she's on her way. Sirach 2 and 13 and 14. And remember where we precepted from uh, Luke 18, mm -hmm. 1. Yeah. Man, I'll, I'll just always pray, not faint. Mm -hmm. So Sirach 2, 13, 14. Sirach <clears throat> chapter 2, verse 13. Woe unto him that is faith hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. See? Oh, him going. And 14. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Wow. wow. So that goes for that person that said, well, it don't look like the Lord's coming. Yeah. So I'm going back to the world. But what do you want to do when the Lord, when the Lord show up? Right. And visit you. Oh, Lord. That say That's that. what the scripture said yep. right there, see? He said, woe unto you that have lost patience. And we know what that word woe means. Yes. Destruction. Sure does. Right? Yeah. So he said, Woe unto them. Woe unto them who have lost patience. And what will ye do when you my re my reason to suffer it calls it the most high name? Uh -huh. When would Yehuda show visit you? Woo. That's not good. See? <laughs> that, that, that's pretty so good. you can't lose faith. Yeah. You can't stop praying. Right. You gotta stay in there. Right? Yeah. Because also you got to make sure and examine yourself. It's true. Because at least you fall into sin. Right. Right? Yeah. And go to Luke 21. Luke 21 and 34, 35, 36. Luke, what, 21? Yeah. Luke 21, 34. 36? Yeah, those verses. Those three verses. Oh, wait a minute. You said 30, from 34 to 36? Th yeah. Yeah, because 34, 35, 36. Okay. This is a good one. Okay. <clears throat> Everybody's ready? Okay. Luke chapter 21, verse 34. And take heed to yourself, lest any, at any time your heart be overcharged with su su suffering and drunkenness and the care of this life, and so that the day come upon you unaware. 35. Yeah. For as a snare shall come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. See what the Lord said? Mm -hmm. He's warning you, don't get caught up in drunkenness mm -hmm. in the cares of this world. Yeah. That means that you're so worried about making it. Mm -hmm. You're worried about being rich mm -hmm. or in, in having the stuff of this world. Right. Right? Yep. That's what he's saying. Don't get so drunk with the cares mm -hmm. of this life. Yes. That that, because if you get drunk and get caught up in this life mm -hmm. and cares of this life, he said that day is going to come on you unaware. Yeah, what he said. 
and it's gonna take you like a snare. Yep. When Christ come back. Yep. Right. Yep. So we broke that down. Well, I guess more. I, I got. I, I got to go to thirty six. All right. Thirty six. Ye therefore and praise always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that come that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. See, the Lord tells us right there. Yeah, right there. He said, pray and watch. He said, that at least you, that you may be worthy, to, worthy, kind of worthy to escape Yeah. the things that's coming here, right? Yeah. And tie that with Joel. Joel chapter 2 and uh, Joel. Joel 2, verse 12, 13 to 14. So this is what Christ is telling us from, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is what he's telling us. Yes. Because this stuff is coming. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. So if you notice, Christ is always teaching from somewhere from the Old Testament. It sure is. Either from the prophets or from the Torah. That's right. Right? Yes. Yeah, this is it's amazing how God uh, is so uh, detailed mm -hmm. that he, he told you what's going to happen. Everything's going to happen. Yes. yes. Detail. Yes. Detail, yes. You want to make sure we get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Joel, J-O-E-L, right? Joel. Mm -hmm. So chapter 2. Verse 12, verse 12, 13 and 14. Yeah, uh, 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 13, uh, 12, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 12. Yeah. Okay, got it? Yeah. Okay. Joel, chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, also now, said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. 13. And rend your heart, not your garment, and turn to the Lord your Elohim, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great kindness, and repent him of the evil. 14. Who knows if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meager offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your Elohim. See? So this is what Christ is talking about. This is only for that terrible day. Yes. Before that comes down. Yes. Then we're supposed to come together. Then you can go ahead and read all the way down to... Uh, this goes all the way to... Uh, 50 on down? Yeah, and we can go to 20. Okay. Because this was, you know, showing right. us what he's warning us okay. about. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. Okay, here it goes. <clears throat> Joel chapter 2, verse 15. Blow the trumpet of Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. 16. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assembly the elders. Gather the children. Those that suck the breath, let the... Uh, uh, Bridegroom, go forth to his chamber, and the bride out of the closet. 17. Let the priest, the minister of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach, that the heathen shall rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their Elohim? 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for that land. And the pity of his people. 19. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will, will no more make you approach among the heathen. 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into the land barren and desolated, 
with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uppermost sea and his stink shall come up and his will savior shall come up because he had done great things so the great things meaning what he done to the most high people yeah Ooh. the wickedness that he's done to them. so right there then we go back don't mind if I go back to 16. Yes. Uh, so I go, I go back to 16, break this down. So he said, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breasts, let the bridegroom go forth out of the chamber and the bride out of her. That's the Lord saying to get, to get in a camp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's telling you to get with the people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what the Lord is telling Israel. We have to come together. You can't say, well, I, I don't need nobody. I read the Bible by wow, myself. Wow, that's bad. Because uh, you, we must come together. Right? Yes. It said that I, you can't say, well, I, I read the Bible by myself. I don't need no one. <laughs> no, that's bad. You got to come together. The Lord yes. is telling us to come together because yes, we all need each other, right? Yes. And then right there in 17, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep yeah. between it's the crying. porch. Yeah. And the altar, and let them say, "Spare thy people." Say, "Spare thy people," because a lot of our people are dying. Yeah, true. And yeah. then, especially at this time, probably. Oh God, yeah. Because when we are what's called it afflicted. Yes. Right. Yeah. Afflicted by the army. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. And so we are gonna need the priests. Yep. Yeah. To cry out. Oh yes. And the people of God must cry out too. Oh yes. Cry out. We have yeah. to cry out as a nation. Yeah. Yeah. Not the individual. Not the individual. Yeah. We can't cry as an individual. We got to cry out as a nation True. to the Lord. Then yep. the Lord will deliver us from this, right? Yep. Then you see in verse 18, yes. then he will, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. See, that's then when the Lord will, uh, will begin to move for his people, right? And then 19. Yet yeah, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therefore with, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Yes. So did you get what 18 is? 18 comes in after we've been crying to the Lord. Ah. 18. That verse comes in after we have cried to the Lord, after yeah. we've been praying. Because uh -huh. you go to verse 18, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yeah. That means the most high is getting ready to step in this thing. Oh, that's right. Right there. We're about to kick in. <laughs> he getting ready to step in this yeah. thing. He getting ready to fight for oh, it. You yeah. know, yeah. right there. Yeah. See? After we have cried yeah. Oh, yeah. to him. Right? Yeah. Because if you go to the other verses, 17, yeah. 16, 16, you have to gather the people yeah, first. Yeah, the people, yeah. Right? And yeah. fast. Yeah. And then you go to 17, yeah. weep, have the ministers, yeah. the priests, yeah. weep and cry. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Now, after we cried and weeped, yeah. now, 18, yeah. the Lord is getting ready to step in yeah. and fight. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So then you go to verse 19, that's, that's when you see the Lord is restoring yeah. everything back to you. Yeah, sure is. Right? So you go to verse 20, you can read verse 20 again. Okay. Because we will show you a precept to go with that. All right. Joel chapter 2, verse 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. With his place toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uppermost sea and his thing shall come up and his ill savior shall come up because he had gone done great things. So the, this his here's the precept that goes with this. Then you'll understand it. Go to Isaiah thirty four and verse two and three. Two and three. Yeah. Come on in. Come in. Yeah. Isaiah thirty four. And verse 2 and 3? 23. Oh, 23. Is it 23 or 2 and 3? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Isaiah 3. Not 23. 2 and 3. Oh. 2 and 3. Okay. So this precept goes, I would say this, we have Joel 2. We precept from uh, chapter 220 uh -huh. 
what it's talking about the northern king the northern army that's when the army is going to be here in the land yeah. and they will be afflicting the children of israel right right so now you see isaiah 34, yeah, 34. it gives you the what what's understanding two what god's three. going to do right yeah two and three yes it preset with Joel 2 and 20. Yeah. So what are we speaking about today, Joel? The, the message, the, the lesson, the way of escape, a way of escape. I'll go back over some of it as we, as we uh, what's call it, go from here. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's ready? Isaiah chapter 34, verse 2. For the ignorant nation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He had utterly destroyed them. He had delivered them to their slaughter. Number three. His slam also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of, the, out of their carcass, and the mountain shall be melt with their blood. See? So that's what the Lord was talking about, the northern army. Yeah. And he's talking about his folk, his face would be towards there, meaning his focus would be towards there. Right. And then he's going to be sent there yeah. where the Lord's going to destroy him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because that, that gives you the peace that you understand it now. Uh-huh. See? Oh, yeah. And so let me get it back where we, because I know you lost where we at. And so you go to Hebrews, where we started out is in verse, uh, it's chapter 2. And three, right? You want to read all that? Yeah, you can read it. All right. Yeah, and listen, I got you got some more. If y'all want, y'all don't got a lot of time. No, we we, we good. We got a lot of time, right? Yeah, we good. <laughs> well, I know this is the Sabbath. Yeah. Right. Yep. Let somebody say, "Well, we got I got to be somewhere." Like where? Where to? You where to go? <laughs> So Hebrews uh, chapter two and yeah that verse three right yeah verse three that's the key verse that you see mm -hmm. so we'll let you read it you almost got it yeah you got it okay yeah. Hebrews 2, 3. Okay. Okay. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? See, right there. So how can you, how can our people escape when they neglect so great of salvation. Yes. Our people right now neglect salvation sure right, is, now. right now. Don't want to get to the Sabbath. Sure don't don't want to get and learn the word. True. Don't want to prepare themselves. They will neglect it. How are you going to escape it? Yeah. If you neglect. But the Lord, He speaks about that. We brought it out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to we'll give you the precepts that we went to. Working our way up. Go to Luke. 18 first, okay. then 18 and 1. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> Christ, this Christ telling you this. Yes. He said you should always pray, not faint. Yeah. Right? Yep. So Luke 18, 1. Uh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Luke 18, 1. Yeah. Eighteen one. I can't find it. I'll write it down. Luke. 
You can't find yeah. Luke. Luke 18. No, but you can't find Luke. The book of Luke. Yeah. Okay, where? Luke is with. Because uh, Luke is a little bit close to the end yeah. in the Sefer. Because mm -hmm. the Sefer, is, they got it. Put it in a different order? Yeah, they got it order how they can yeah. uh, teach, or how to say. Yeah. Chronicle order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. They got the same book, right? Same Bible? So. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yes. Okay. See it? You got it? Okay. <clears throat> Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. See? Always to pray and not faint. So you faint, right? Mm -hmm. So, Sirach, this precept goes with that. 2 8, 2 13, 14. 2 13, 14. Sirach. So, we, we just want to go through all this because I want to make sure everybody get it. Right. <clears throat> so Sirach two thirteen fourteen. Verse 13. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believed not, therefore shall he not be offended. 14. Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? See? And see, just like I brought up before, you know, the you know, we in the birth pains, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of things you see happening. And I know sometimes we, we I can see Israel when we see it. You say, oh man, you see all this going on? Mm -hmm. The Lord is coming. Mm -hmm. He's coming. But then stuff drop down. Yep. <laughs> slow down. Yep. It's like everything's back to normal a little yep. bit, right? Uh -huh. And it's like everything moves slow. Yep. All of a sudden, they lose faith. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they faint. Yep. Because they don't, you know, but the thing is, how, how is it when you have the baby? Mm -hmm. Those contractions come. Yeah. But then they drop down, right? Yep. Right? Yep. And you and you and for a while you don't know if you feel like the baby's not coming, right? <laughs> but then all of a sudden it hits again. Yep. Boom. Then it gets harder, right? Yep. Then the baby's finally coming, right? Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. That's how it's it. That's how it is. And so the Lord's saying, Don't lose faith. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Continue to pray. Yeah. Just like we gotta be praying and crying out to the yeah, Lord right. and praying out because this is coming, right? Yeah, it's coming. Right? Yeah. So you, so you go ahead. Do we read thirty six again? Uh, let me see. 36. No. Okay. You want, you want me to go to Luke twenty one? Uh. That we. Oh, yeah, we just came out Sarah. Yeah, we got. We're to, in Sarah. Yeah, yeah, down Sarah. I read. I read. I go it. I read it. So I want. I want you to get it. Okay. I want her to get it. Right. So, uh, two thirteen fourteen. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believes not. Therefore shall he not be the. Defended, that means the Lord will not defend you. Right. If you faint hearted, you lost faith. You fainted and went back to the world, right? Mm -hmm. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when Yehuda shall visit you? So the ones who, what are you going to do when the Lord visit you? When he comes. Yeah. There's nothing you can do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Now Luke 21, 30, 34, 35, and 36. Luke 21, 34, 35, 36. Uh, 
You getting it, Jimmy? Okay. You got it? Yeah. About to read it? Ready? Okay. Luke 21, verse 34. And take heed to yourself, lest any time your heart be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the terror of this life, and so that the day come upon you unawares. 35. For as a snare shall come unto all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be count worthy to escape all these things that shall come, up, come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. See? So that right there, going back to that verse 30, 34 and 35 and all of that, mm -hmm. when he said that, that don't get caught up in the cares of this life. Yeah. Of this world. You worried about a job. You worried about, oh man, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take care of my family. I'm yeah. going to do this and all that. All that's just taking a burden on your mind. Sure is. And then you just focus on that. Yeah. Now you lost focus on the Lord. Yeah. Now you just focus on, uh, I need money. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You said, well, I need me a car. I got yeah. <coughs> And you focus on, I got to get me a car, man. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've been walking for 20, about, about <laughs> two months. Yep. <laughs> You know, yep. and the cares of this life is taking you, exactly. and you're carried up on that. The Lord don't want you to be up on the cares of this life. Sure, you're right about that. He don't. And then we can give you a verse to help you with that. If the cares of this life is overweighing you, mm -hmm. Matthew six thirty three. This for those who may be heavy. Seek ye first the kingdom of God first. Then all these things will be added unto you. So the Lord, will, he will add that onto you if you seek him first. So he said that. I didn't say that. Right. Right? Yeah. So you have to trust what the Lord said. Right? Yeah. So if you worry about, oh, Lord, I need a car. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need some money so I can pay my bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, so seek, it, seek ye first the kingdom first. Mm -hmm. And he said that will be added onto you. Right. You got to believe his word. Yes. Right? Yes. And so that, my point is like, if you don't believe his word, then what are you doing? Yeah. 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 What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. You know, you might as well just do it yourself. True. If you don't believe, word, believe his word. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's for those who may be faint hearted. Yeah. And so Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do with all these problems or this. Like they drown in me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the word of God can bring you out. True. There's power in the word. Yes. So let's give you that Matthew 6 33. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. See? So keep that in your mind. Right? Mm -hmm. So those who may be faint hearted. Yeah. Right? Yep. So now we have already, we already went down and go back to Joel 2 and 2 and 12, 13 and 14. Okay. So this all ties into Christ, Sierra, where he said, he said, pray and watch, right? Mm -hmm. That you may be worthy to, you know, count yourself worthy to escape, right? Yes. When he's talking about escape, that's when the chariots come. Yeah. That's what he's talking that's about. That's coming, yeah. Right? To deliver you out of here. Yeah, because you're going to get bad. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So right there. So I know y'all, are you ready for the charts? That's the only escape you got. That is yeah. salvation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know we got to get ready. True. And prepare. Exactly. For that. There's a lot of years we're not prepared at all. A lot of our people neglect salvation. True. Ah. Very true. So Joel 2 and 12 and 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. So remember, Sierra, that this ties in with Luke 21, 13, I mean 35 and 36. Yeah. That's how you precept, you put them all together. So now you understand what, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Cause this is, 
the Lord warning us about this affliction coming. Yeah. And he telling us to get ready. Yeah. Seek him, prepare. Yeah, because he's going to get ready. Because when these armies come in and invade us, mm -hmm. we got to be ready. Yes. Seeking the Lord. Crying out to him. Yeah. That we may be worthy to escape. Exactly. Uh, to escape. See it? Okay, you got it? Yeah. Okay. Joel, chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Uh, 13. And rend your heart, and not your garment, and turn unto the Lord your Elohim, for he is gracious, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great kindness, and repent him of the evil. 14. He knoweth if he will return, repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your Elohim. That's 18, right? Yeah, yeah, that's 14. Oh, 14, all right. Yeah. 14. So repent, right? Yes. So that's going into prayer, that's going into your supplication, because that's supplications, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And so that that's what we got to be praying and getting ourselves right. Mm -hmm. And so you don't mind if I go down go to ahead. drop down to 16. All right. But 15, yeah. Uh, 15. Uh, sorry, 15 on down? Okay. Yeah. Joel, chapter 2, verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify the past, call a solemn assembly. 16. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assembly the elders. Gather the children. The dough that suck the breath. Let the, bride, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of the closet. 17. Let the priest and the minister of the Lord weep upon the porch and the altar and, and, and let, let, let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to the approach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their Elohim? 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Eight, uh, 19. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied, satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you approach among the heathen. 20, but I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive them into the land of barren and desolate with his place toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the upper sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savior shall come up because he had done great things. See, the northern army, that's when they're going to be invade this area. Yes. And uh, that's when uh, our people is going to be going through affliction. Yes, it is. And so this, when you talk about the Lord is telling you, you go back to 16 and uh, you go to 15, he said, call a fast. And he said, gather the people. Yeah. So lot, so all these so-called Israelites that I heard, I'm talking about the ones that I heard. Mm -hmm. I don't need no one. Wow. I read the Bible. Oh, it's bad. I just need, I just read the Bible. I know the Lord, so I don't need no I don't need no camp. Mm -mm -mm. I don't need no. But the Lord tells you right here in yeah. sixteen yes. to gather with the people, right? Yes. He said then uh, when you go into he said the chamber yep. and the bride out of her closet. Yep. That means go to a camp. Yeah. Get to get around the sanctuary yep. around them. Yep. Right. Yes. Right. Oh Lord, He's giving me something else. Yeah. That adds to this. Go ahead. Go to uh, Isaiah. I believe it's four. Go to Isaiah four. And uh, verse. I give you verse six. Oh, okay. Okay, this is a small chapter. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. 
So uh, Isaiah 4 and 6. Mm -hmm. But before we go to 6, uh -huh. this is start with verse verse 1 and 2. Uh-oh, Elijah 4? Yeah, because this is all going into the day when the Lord delivers us out of, uh, uh, what's called it, this captivity. Two and six, okay. So uh, this is what this is talking about, and uh, what's called it, uh -huh. and chapter 4 and verses uh, 1 and 2. Okay. Then we'll drop to 6. six. Okay. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. And that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Two, and that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent, coming into them that are escaped of Israel. Six, there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heart for the place of refuge, for the comfort from the storm and from the rain. So when you go to verse 1, when you go to, uh, he said, in, the, in that day, seven women. So it's talking about the day when all this stuff hits. Wow. When all this stuff hits, seven women is talking about the seven, you know, it's talking about the women of Israel. Yes. And it shall take hold of one man. That's talking about the men of the Lord. Uh -huh. See, this is not talking about Christ right here. Right. This is talking about he's, they're going to take men, take hold of the men of the Lord mm -hmm. who's who's teaching uh, yeah. the word. Yeah. Who's preparing them. Yeah. You know, and they're going to say, remove, you know, remove us, you know, from our reproach. Yeah. What's the reproach? It goes back to Genesis. Yeah. When the woman Eve yeah. disobeyed the Lord, right? Yeah. So that reproach, it caused the woman to have menstrual cycles, mm -hmm. right? And pain, yep. all that. Yep. So the Lord is going to remove that, Yes. right? Yep. So that's right here. And then you go into verse 2. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious in the fruit of the earth and shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. See, escape. That's talking about you coming up out of this captivity. Yes. Then you go to verse 6. Go to verse 6, mm -hmm. and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge for a car covert yeah. from storm and from rain. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. that's talking about a, a man, a shepherd. Yeah, yeah. Because he shall be a hiding place. Yeah. And we can show you the precept. I'll be this in Isaiah 34. Let me see it. It's in Isaiah 32 Isaiah. and verse, verse, verses, uh, you can read verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 32? Yeah, 30, Isaiah 32. Verse. Verses 1 and 2. 1 and 2, okay. So verse 2, it precept with Isaiah 4 and 6. Okay. <clears throat> okay, everybody's ready? Okay. I said, I'm not going too fast with all the y'all, Imam. All right, all right. I said, chapter 32, verse 1. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and the princess shall rule in judgment. Two, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and from the convert from the tempest, as a river of the water in a dry place, as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. See, when you read that, you probably didn't get no understanding. You probably didn't understand that, did you? Mm -hmm. So you go to verse 1, where it said, Behold, a king shall reign, that's talking about Christ, uh -huh. and, and righteousness, and princes. That's, the princes are the, are the 12 tribes, yes. and shall rule in judgment. See? Yeah. That's when he brings the kingdom down, right? right? Now you go to verse 2, And man shall be as in hiding place from the wind, and a carvert from the tempest. Because all the trouble that's coming on this earth. Yes. And so the Lord's talking about the men of the Lord, the man that's teaching his uh -huh. truth. And so if you're not under under that, because the man is the hedge. Yes. It's gonna keep gonna keep you protected. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. So the Lord dealing with men, that men leaders. Yep. Isn't the scriptures? Yep. Not gonna show you. Yeah. 
You know, right? This is what he's saying. A man shall be as in hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest because the trouble that's coming, right? Yeah. As a rivers of water and a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Yeah. Now you go back. This precepts with Isaiah 4, 6. Right. So if they're not under the shepherds that God set up, you are not in safety. Yeah. Right? So 4, 6. Yeah. So this is all tying in what we're teaching, right? Right. Because also when we praying, I can't just pray, right? Because yeah. some people might say, well, I, I'm, I'm praying at home. Oh, that's right. They be saying that. Yeah, and good. that's what some people and they not they're not congregating with no one. Right. Right? True. Say I'm praying at home and I'm reading my Bible at yeah. home. Yeah. That ain't good here. No. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. Yep. Right here. And so cause the Lord said congregate, come together. Yes. Because because guess what? When the affliction come, guess what's gonna happen? Yeah. They're gonna be running and looking for us. That's right. Because when it gets hard, oh yeah. It's gonna cause us to come together. Oh yeah, they be running high. You know? High. To find right? Yes. So this this is that precept. So I want you to get that precept that we just got in uh, Isaiah 32, 2, mm -hmm. and going back to 4 and 6, this this goes with that. Yeah, exactly. It goes with uh, uh 32 and 2. Right. So 4, 6, Isaiah 4, 6. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 6. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge. And for the convert from the star and from the rain. So if you notice what the heat goes into, that goes into affliction. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because we can give you that also. Because And he said there should be a tabernacle. So that's dealing with, he's talking about a man, a, a man of the Lord is yeah. teaching you. Yeah. So that's the tabernacle, right? Yeah. And so a shadow in the daytime. In the heat, because when you have a big, strong tree, yeah. you're under the shadow. Right. And under that shade, it yeah. protects you yeah. from the heat. Right? right? What yeah. is the heat and, and, and symbol in? It's symbolizing affliction. Oh, yeah. Because when you're getting hit by the heat, yeah. you're being afflicted. That's right. Right? Yeah. So right here, this ties in. You can go to, uh, it's in Psalms, I believe it's Psalms 120, 125, right? What, you said 120? Is it 125? Mm. Okay, it's in 121. Okay. And start with verse 5. Let's this, this talk about the Lord being the shade. So write this verse down. It ties in with, uh, with Isaiah 4, 6 and all that. Okay, Psalms. Five, Psalms 121. 121. And start it with 5. 5 and we're going down. To and go down to 6. All right. Psalms 121. <clears throat> Ready? Okay. Psalms chapter 121, verse 5. And the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. 6. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor by moon by night. See? So the Lord, you because that goes into Psalms 191. You see, if you dwell under the, 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 the shadow of the Most High, Meaning you do it under his, because he's a tree, the most high is a tree too. Yes. That's what it's talking about. It said right here in verse 5. Uh -huh. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Yeah. So you have to have a real good strong tree to have some shade, right? Yeah, right. So if, if so, if you have a shepherd that's a tree, mm -hmm. that's that's teaching the word, mm -hmm. so you under his sheep, that also protects you from demonic stuff. Oh, oh, it's, it, it, it keeps you from being the possessed by demons. Yeah. 
because you're under that shade, you're under that protection in it, in it, and under that hedge, and it keeps you from being attacked by the enemy. Right. But if you're not under that, anything the enemy is just having a still day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so this, that's why you see a lot of our people are under affliction right now. They're going under affliction because they're not under the tree. Of, they're not under the shade of the Most High. Sure not. Because you're going to right here, verse 5 again, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. Then you go to verse 6. Yeah. The sun shall not smit thee by day, nor the moon by night. Mm -hmm. Many times it was other nations that smit us. Oh, yeah. And they afflicted us. Oh, yeah. So the sun is going into affliction. Yeah. Being afflicted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So when you're not under the shade of the Lord, you're going to be afflicted. Sure is. Right? Yeah. Affliction is coming. Right. Yeah. And so, and, they, and so the so the the moon in the the moon in the sun deals with affliction. Right. Right. Because yep. at night you can be afflicted. Yep. yep. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> yep. And so you get afflicted at night. That's right. And you may not understand why you are afflicted because you're not under the shade. Yep. You're not under the tree. Right. Right. Yep. Right. Oh yeah. And so that's what he goes in and talks about. Go back into uh, 30, uh, Isaiah 32. Two. Ooh, this is getting good. Oh, yes. The word is good. Okay. So 32, two. Mm -hmm. And remember that precept, what, uh, what's called it? Isaiah 4 6. Yeah. Now you know what Isaiah 4 6 is talking about because it's tying in and when it's talking about the tempest. Because when you talk about the tempest, that you're going to look at tornadoes yep. hitting and all that. Yep. And, the, and, the, and also you can look at hurricanes. Right. Tempests, yep. right? Yeah. And so when he's talking about that tempest is hitting you because mm. all it's going to get rough. Yeah. Those tempests are going to hit oh, no. When the Lord is talking about tempests, he's talking about these men, these evil men coming yeah. at, 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 yeah. after you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And going to afflict you. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So right here, that's what he said. But if you, he said a man is going to be a hiding place. Yeah. The, the, the men of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The real men of the Lord. I'm talking about those who, who hey, you got to give me a $25,000. No, no, you yeah, forget that guy. <laughs> if, you want me, if you want me to speak the Lord's yeah, word. Forget that person. It's going to, you got to give me $20,000. <laughs> we got $20,000 in the back of the pocket. Right? All right. <laughs> so we're not talking about that. Those are not the men of the Lord. The, those who are, you know, charging money. Yeah. The, the men of the Lord, they're going to speak. Yes. It's in the Bible. Yeah. Freely given, freely give. Yeah. That's what the Lord said. Because mm -hmm. it was freely given to us. Sure. That is freely give. Yes. Right? Yes. So we'll read that verse again. Right. 32. I, okay. okay. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 2. And in man shall be a hiding place from the wind and from the convert from the tempest, as a river of water in the dry place, as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. See? The weary land. And we know what that weary land is America. Yeah. And then you go to scripture because where you land, that means there's no truth in it. Ooh. Right? Yeah, no truth in it. Right. right. Right? And we can give you the peace going back and showing you that it's darkness yeah. going into Job 10. Yeah. This is a land of darkness. It's a weary land. Right? Mm -hmm. Verses 21 and 22. Chapter 10 in Job. Okay. All right. Best for money name, your holy name. Okay, if I got it? Yeah. Okay. Job, chapter 10, verse 21. Before I go, go hence, Shall I not return, even in the land of darkness and the shallow of death? 22. In the land of darkness as darkness itself, and the shallow of death without any order, where the light is as darkness. Yeah. So this in 21, this when it's talking about the, the shadow of death, that's the land of your captivity. Yeah. And you can precept that with Psalms 1-7, and I think it's uh, verses 10, right? 
So that right there, it tell you that's the land of your captivity. So this place is the uh, darkness, right? Yeah. And then we go to 22, a land of darkness as darkness itself and the shadow of death without any order. There's no order here. Right. There's all that sin. Yeah. You can be a homosexual. You can be, cool. a, you can be a lesbian. You can be anything you want to be. That's bad. Right? Yeah. No order. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no order. Right? right? And he said, where the light is, that's darkness. Christianity. Yeah. Christianity seems like it's good. It seems like it's the light, but it's darkness. Yeah. yeah. Right? Christianity is darkness. So that's what it said. That scripture, it breaks it down clear. But if you don't know what these scriptures are talking about, you have no idea what it's talking about. Right. You lost. Yeah. So if you don't have no idea what it's talking about, that means also you in the dark. Yeah. You in darkness. <laughs> yeah, in the dark. Because you have no idea what the Bible's talking about. <laughs> right. Yep. Right? Yep, you're in the dark. You're in the dark. Yep. So right there, so without order, and where the light is as darkness, when you're talking about the light is as darkness, that's Christianity. Yeah. yeah. Christianity, is, it seems like it's light, but it's darkness. There it is, nothing but darkness. Right? Yep. So now we have broke that down. I didn't go too fast when you did. No, no, you're doing good. Right? And so this go... Let's go to the to the last verse of that where we uh, we broke the precept in Joel. Joel two twenty. Joel two twenty. Joel two twenty. Wants his, he wants his nation together. Yes, he does. He don't want individuals. No, he uh, don't. Just say, well, I'm with the Lord. He's me and him, my homies. Mm -hmm. And me and, me and the Lord got our thing going. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not into that, man. You, you, you have to be the whole body. <laughs> yeah. You know. You have to love for the whole body. The whole body. Yeah, you have to go. One piece of it. <laughs> yeah. Because I heard people like that. They say, me and the Lord got something going on. Yeah. Me and the Lord, me and the Lord, we at yeah. this. Well, you know? Yeah. As somebody told me before, I mean, somebody told me, they said they don't got to go to church. They go they go out to the force. Really? And they said the Lord speak to them oh, when they in the force. Yeah. You know, the force by the trees. Yeah. All right. They said the Lord speak them out there. They said, I don't, I don't need nobody. I just, the Lord's with me. Really? <laughs> That's not Bible. No, it's not. It's not <laughs> You're not going words. in scriptures. Yeah. The Lord said to gather together. Yeah, it sure did. Uh. What y'all looking for? I'm looking for Joel. Joel. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. Joel is a short book. Yeah. Sometimes that's why it's hard to find it. Right. Uh, uh. Okay. Joel, chapter 2, verse 20. Yeah. But I will remove far off from from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate for his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uppermost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savior shall come up because he had done great things see see and i'll give you a little brief breakdown in this go to 18 then when the lord be jealous for the land and pity his people that's when after we have cried out to him, yes. the priest, we wept, yep. we cried, yep. we cried out with our whole hearts yep. to the Lord to repent mm -hmm. and turn back to the Lord. Now the Lord said, now he pity his people, now he about to fight. Yeah. He about to jump in this thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. No, and know this, this hasn't happened yet, but it's oh. getting ready to come. That's right. You know, yep. the yep. Lord is telling us what's getting ready to happen. True. Right? Yep. And so now you go to verse 20, he said he will remove... This is after we prayed, cried out. Yep. Then he said, I will remove far from you the northern army 
and I will drive him into the hand of the land barren and desolate with his face toward the east yeah. sea. Man, his focus will be what's going on over there. Yeah, over the east. Yeah. Because there's going to be war. Yeah. That's what the Lord has got in all the armies. Yes. Right? Yes. And his hinder part toward the Utamorse sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he have done great things. What do you mean great things? He had done things to God's people. Yes. Right? Yeah. Now I'll give you the precept. Isaiah 34. 34, 2 and 3. It break down the scripture, and you uh, now you'll see what what what's going to happen. Oh yeah. Yeah. So 34, so 34, 34, 2 and 3. Oh. Yeah, so notice uh, Isaiah 34, 2 and 3. Oh. It tells you what's going to happen in verse verse 20. Yeah. And uh, Joel, Joel 2, right. 2 and 20. Yeah. That's why God tells us to read precept on precept, line up on line. True. Then you understand what, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. But if I just read one verse, I, I'm not going to understand a thing that's going on. You know? Because <laughs> if I just read one verse, that verse going to mess me up. Oh, and I'm not, yeah. not going to know what's going on. Yeah, because you got to tie you together. And... Okay, ready? Isaiah chapter 34, verse 2. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He had utterly destroyed them. He had delivered them to the slaughter. Three, and their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcass, and the mountain shall be melt with their blood. See? Yeah. The Lord is going to destroy the armies. Yeah, they're going to do some damage. And that northern army that had, he sent them over there to get them destroyed. Yep, that's what he did. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yep. Yeah, the Lord gonna remove them from us. Sure is. Something's gonna happen, and His focus is gonna be towards that, right? Yep. To the East Sea. Yep. Right, mm -hmm. and we know that's the land of Israel. Yeah, the land of Israel. Right. Yep. Right there in Jehoshaphat, because mm -hmm. that's where the Lord gonna bring them at. Yep. To the land of the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Mm -hmm. That's where it's gonna be. All that war is gonna take place. Yep, sure is. And Christ is gonna beat them in battle. Yep, and that's gonna be the Armageddon. Ooh. See? Wow. And so now, you now that now that you see the precepts, yeah. Whenever somebody talks to you, you can show them this. Yeah. You can bring it out, bring yeah. it out. Yeah. And show them, right? Oh yeah. And you said, well, I don't. You if you feel like you don't know it that good, keep going on. Go back and go yeah. over it oh, until you oh, get it. Oh yeah. Then get down to your spirit. Then you can show that person whoever you're talking to. You can break these scriptures out. Yes. You know. Yes. Right. Yes. And so then I got some more to break down to this. Okay. Because I found out, if you look at Romans 10 and 13, it all goes into this. 10 and 13? Yeah. Go to Romans 10, 13. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. A lot of people don't know that, though. No, they don't. They don't know that it goes into Joel and uh, all, all this that's bringing they down. Sure don't. I they don't. They think of something else. So, Romans 10, 13. That's uh, a real quick one. Here it goes. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See? So what did, what did we just read in Joel? Same that thing. the Lord called for a fast. Yep. Right? Sure did. And and praying. Yep. And crying. Yep. So we so yeah. that goes into that. Yep. Right? Yep. So and it's not talking about everybody, all the nations crying out. No. It's talking about Israel crying out. That's what I'm talking about. And he said, Whoever 
calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. Right? Yes. And then you precept that this is what uh, Paul was reading from. Uh -huh. Joel, Joel yeah. two thirty two. Go to yeah. that's the precept with that. Joel two thirty two. Two thirty two. Okay. That's going into the uh, the second Exodus okay. when he delivers us from from what we just brought out. Okay. Right. So Romans ten thirteen precept with Joel two thirty two. Oh. So Paul is quoting Joel. Yeah, sure is. Yes, he is. Okay, if I got it. Yeah. Okay. Joel chapter two, verse thirty-two. It shall come to pass, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in the Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deli deliverance, as the Lord has said in the remnant. Whom the Lord shall call. See? This also goes with Daniel 12, right? Yes, it does. Daniel 12, 1. Let's get that. Daniel 12, 1, because it's talking about the time of trouble. Yeah. Your tribulation. Yep. The Lord said those who have their name written in the book of life will be delivered. Yep. That's when the church is going to come in to carry you yeah, away. Exactly. Right there. Yep. So it ties into uh, Joel 2, 32. Yep. Go to uh, Daniel 12, 1. No, no, it has to be real. Oh, it be serious. Yeah, that means you have to repent if you're doing wickedness. Mm -hmm. You got to repent for all that. Oh yeah. And, and yeah. cry to the Lord. Yeah. So that He can deliver you out of here. Exactly. Right. Because that's when dang hit the fan. <laughs> yeah. So you can't be uh, pretending crying because oh, the Lord can He can see through oh, that. Oh yes, He can. He can see if you got fake tears. Mm -hmm. Fake tears. Yeah, you know that phoniness. Yeah, because yeah. some people got fake tears. Yeah. You know. I'm not saying all, but there's some people that, that are good actors. Yeah, yeah. That's the word, actors. <laughs> okay, Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall the Mike, shall Michael stand up, and the great prince will stand up for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. At that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. Yeah, found written in the book. See? Right there, see it? Yes. Then, go back to Romans 10, 13. Okay. Write that down again. Romans 10, 13. Which is why I'm doing that because I'm getting ready to go to another precept. Okay. Uh, uh, Y'all ready? <clears throat> ready? Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now go to Psalms 86, 7. Psalms 86, 7. It's amazing that the Lord put this in there. And he said, in the day of, in the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee. For he will answer me. And so, while all this stuff is going on, that is the day of trouble. Yes. Psalms 86, 7. Mm -hmm. Psalms 
Psalms 86, 7. Psalm 86, verse 7. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. See? So in the day of trouble, you, the Lord will answer you. Yes. You call upon him. Yes. Then also God also will protect you and hide you. Psalms 32, 7. Psalms 32, 7. The Lord, He's your hiding place. Then also, the Lord also say, he, "The men of the Lord are your hiding hiding place." Yeah. Because we brought that out, right? Yeah. Because that's in the Psalms thirty-two seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, Psalm thirty-two seven. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt be. Preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of their deliverance. Salah. See? So the Lord's your hiding place and the, the men of the Lord. Yeah. We brought that out. Yeah. Broke that down. Because the ones who are teaching the Lord's uh -huh. word, right? Yes. We talking about the real men of the Lord. Yeah, the real ones, not the bony ones. And did I give you Psalms 32 6? No. Give you Psalms 32 6. Psalms chapter 32 verse 6 For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the flood of great water they shall not come nigh unto him. See, the waters also deal with waters and the waters also deal with men. Yeah. Men, the men, evil men, men shall not come near you. Right. Right? <laughs> yep. Because you know evil men want to come and kill you. Yep. Right? Yep. So that right there, 32 and 6, right? Yep. And also uh, Psalms 31, 20. Psalms 31, 20. So we know that that's both uh, two meanings. It can mean also uh, the what, you know, men, mm -hmm. evil men coming at you. Also the floods, when the blood, the Lord might flood this place out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because we know that's supposed to come too. Yeah, that's supposed to come too. Yes. So the waters won't touch you. Yes. Right? Uh huh. So Psalms 31 and 20. Okay, everybody's ready? Psalms 31, verse 20. And thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the stripe of tongue. See, he tells you he'll hide you from the pride of man. Yeah. Because men are prideful. Sure is. They want to kill you. They want to do wicked stuff. Yeah. You know, he'll hide you from that. Yeah. That's in the scriptures right there. True. Right? Yeah. Keep you safe. That's why you stay in the Lord. Stay praying. See the Lord. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, that, that speaks about the angel in camp with, uh, around those who fear him, right? Yes. That's also, we got that in Psalms. I forgot the, what that's at. And they find that out. Okay. And it said the angel encamp around those who fear the Lord. So the angels around us, so we also will, according to what God is saying, that we don't have to worry about evil men. Right. Uh, worry about that. There it is. 
is in, it's in Psalms 34, verse 7. Psalm 34, verse 7. Okay. Oh, yeah. Psalms 34, verse 7. And the angel of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him and deliver them. See? So that means you got angels. The angels yes. around us. Yes. And even if you don't know it or not, the angels are here. Yes. While we are teaching. Yes, they are here. <laughs> right? Yeah. You may not be able to see them. Yeah. Sometimes do. I can see it like sometimes like, moving like around. A glimpse? Yeah. yeah, a glimpse. Yeah. I see that something. In a glimpse of my eye, I see them moving. Yeah. Yeah. Cause sometimes you see a little peep, a yeah. little glimpse. Yeah. You see them moving around. Yeah. Cause I'll be thinking, I'll be going, what is that? I'll be looking, what is that? They go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they hear, they hear, yeah, they, they hear. Cause the scripture says it, the angel of the Lord. Yeah. And camp it around about them that fear him. him. Yeah. And delivereth them. Yeah. See? So also it said delivereth. Yeah. Deliver. So guess what? When the chariots come, yes. the angel's going to gather us. That's right. Right? Yeah. So you got, that's why you got to make sure that you are seeking the Lord, praying, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and uh, keeping his commandments. Exactly. Just like Christ said, we said what Christ said, right? Yeah. That you may be worthy to count yourself to escape. Yeah. Because it's going to be terrible things sure that's is. getting ready to happen. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be madness. Yes. Madness. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. And we probably can't imagine what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so, that's that's the wrap. That's a wrap. Sure is. Unless somebody wants, you want anything to say, they got questions, questions that you want to ask? Or? That's going to be it. That's going to be the wrap. Mm -hmm. Got questions you want to ask anybody? I'm good. Everybody quiet? Yeah. But, uh, so, uh, you got questions you want to ask? So you pretty much understand it? No. You, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, you know, you keep going over it. Yeah. It, it. You know, you'll grab it later. You know, sometimes it takes time. You get in there. Yeah. And so you got the scriptures though, right? That's good. You can go over the scriptures and stuff. And I think, hey, because uh, he said that, I guess you put it on YouTube, right? You yeah. Put on, well, it, I put it out there, but I'm not sure anybody sees it. Yeah. But it's out there. Because if she probably want to watch that video yeah, over. Yeah, it should be out there. Um, go to YouTube. And then, uh, what do I type in? Huh? What do I type in? You type in YouTube videos. You, YouTube, hey. with, you put videos, and it takes you to the videos. Yeah. And then once you go in the video. Yeah. She so wants the name so she can go to oh, oh. go to our video. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, there's many of them. I, there's many videos. I know it's many of them. There's many. If once you go in, you get you a whole list of videos. No, you don't. You don't have like a username that I can type in, or no, it's just videos. I mean, oh, oh, that <laughs> it's it's K it's K L O Y. It means Kingdom Life, or yes, well. Okay. Yeah, that, that takes you right to it. Yeah, okay. wow, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, now I can find it. So if I yeah. just typed in the video. Yeah, sorry. you put that in there. Yeah, you go. <laughs> what, what I'm looking for. Yeah, you're right. It will be in. Because uh, I used to see in other camps use that same. You see a whole ton of it. And we in the midst of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Nobody, everybody clear. Nobody want want no, to say anything. I'm good. Anybody want to say anything? This is, this is excellent, Gray. Uh, Mom, you don't want to say nothing. She good. And, uh, yeah. Sierra, you want to say anything? Anyone, anyone, anyone at that table want to say anything? Good, I'm good. All right. Our right, Uncle James, you want to say something? Uh, okay, is he good? Jimmy. So y'all good, right? Yeah, we good. So you are cleared up. All yes. right. All right. Yeah.
But did y'all see how all those scriptures go in? Yeah, they, they, all they, they're all tied together. Yeah. They're all tied together. Yeah. That just blew me all ass up. Wow. He just, uh, that is what Christ was talking about. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know that. What he said that, uh, pray yeah. they, that you may be worthy to count yourself worthy to escape. Mm -hmm, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit. Because all this stuff's going to hit. Yes. The thing is, that a lot of our people that's, uh, that's not being aware of it, mm -hmm. it's going to catch them unaware. Oh, yeah, it sure is. Get the birth like of a snare. It's going to be like a snare. See? And you don't want that. No, not that. Right? All right. So as I said, yes, everybody's clear. So we go ahead. So, Father, we thank you right now for everything that you have done, and we thank you for this truth. And, Lord, I know that every need is met. Thank you. Father God, I believe that you are working out stuff, and I believe you're opening doors for people that need doors open for them. Father God, that we just pray right now, touch them, that every need is met. Father God, we pray as this truth grows with us. Lord, that we continue to go in this truth. Touch some of us who don't quite understand yet, but Lord, that I know that they will get it. Mm -hmm. Lord, that they will begin to see it. Because it has to be you that give it to them. Yes. Because Lord, that it be you that give it to them. Touch each one in here. And Lord, as we go from here, and those who have to travel, let them be safe and that they can get home safe. Father God, let it be you that bring them safely. And so, Father, we pray, Lord, touch the food and the hands that prepare it. Bless it. Bless the fellowship. And as we go from here, shalom. Amen.